Hello and welcome to the Quality of Mind Transforming Business podcast series. And in today's show, we have a, a kind of special episode because we're going to dedicate this to the coronavirus, to COVID-19. And uh, we're recording this on the, the 12th of March um, 2020, in case uh, anyone listens to this in a few years' times and uh, wonders why we were saying what we were saying. Um, we thought it was valuable and useful just at this time, uh, this very interesting time for our world to look at the, the virus and its impact through the lens of quality of mind. And hopefully by doing so, it will give people um, a couple of things. One, maybe some ease and some fresh thinking about uh, the virus and the implications, but also a little bit of insight uh, into this understanding of the mind that uh, we so consistently talk about. So let's just give um, a little bit of context from um, how we see it. Now, bear in mind, this is just uh, uh, one view uh, and is certainly not one that's endorsed by any kind of medical uh, <laughs> uh, organization. But, but the, the way it looks um, to me now is that for most people, uh, a good majority of people, th the impact of the virus um, won't actually be most impactful in terms of their health. Um, f f for the majority of people who actually contract the virus, they will be ill for, 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 for some days um, and they might have some symptoms, but they won't be too bad uh, rel relatively. It'll be like a bad flu or something. So for, for, for most people, actually, the impact of this of this uh, virus won't be on their health, on their medical health. They might have a week or so where they don't feel great, um, but for the vast majority of people, the impact will more be on a the amount of sort of mental bandwidth this width this takes up, the amount of worry, stress, anxiety, concern, focus for. Am I going to get it? What's it mean for my family, my work, uh, the economy, the world? Um, and and secondly, you know, actually dealing with some of those implications because there will be implications. We're seeing them already. You know, you can't travel. You're probably going to um, not be able to work soon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, the impact for most of us is more going to be a a one at the level of mind uh, and a mental one rather than uh, a physical or biological one. Um, and of course, I realize there are some vulnerable people out there who will have significant uh, physical impact from this. And even for sort of a few percentage of, of very unfortunate people, that they may even pass away from this. But for the majority of us, actually, the impact is, is not going to be a, a one at a level of health. So therefore, how can we see that fresh? How, how can we help ourselves by understanding a little bit more about the mind um, to alleviate some of those um, sort of impacts at the level of the mind. So just wanted to talk about a, a few aspects of the understanding behind quality of mind that may be useful to reflect on and consider. So one thing a lot of people are uh, coming across right now is there's so much information out there about what to do, about what's going on, about what not to do. It's that they're, they're calling it an infodemic as well as a pandemic. We've got an infodemic. So how do I navigate through all the noise of stuff out there? What's the best things to listen to? What isn't? What should I shouldn't I be doing? Well, this comes back to understanding how clarity works in the mind and also knowing a little bit about our ability, the mind's ability to synthesize lots of different information. So. You've probably experienced it over the last few days and weeks that sometimes you have an obviousness about what to do and, and what pre what sort of uh, precautions to take or not. And sometimes you think, oh, well, if I read this, I would do this. Or if I did that, I would do that. And, and that can lead to sort of uh, anxiety, stress and disaster casting. But if we, if we notice that the mind does have the ability to synthesize lots of different inf pieces of information, lots of different even... Uh, sides of an argument and get to clarity it can do that it, it can settle and come up with some succinct obviousness of what to do now you'll notice it's best at doing this when you are less attached and care less about what the topic is so it's it's quite often the case that you're listening to someone else a friend or, or a relative or a colleague um you know 
who's very confused by something and, and you just see simplicity and you're thinking, well, actually, I've listened to everything they've said. I've listened to all the sides of the argument and this is what it looks like. And you can get to that obviousness quite quickly. Now, on the other side, when it's something to do with you, maybe it's your own children, your own business or, or a decision that looks very big, um, that doesn't look as easy. So what we need to spot there is the system has an innate capacity to get to synthesis, clarity and obviousness, but not when we are investing a lot of narrative, uh, conceptual meaning into what it is. Now, of course, with this situation with COVID, it's very likely you are doing that <laughs> because of all the noise that's out there. So, so the tip here is back off that. Just let the mind settle and you'll find that obviousness, clarity in the moment, that wisdom, that intelligence of what to do starts to come back in. And you'll probably find it varies. It goes in and out. But if you respect that it's a mind issue, not an external information issue, then you know where to leverage. So that's the first thing to say. Um, the next point would be to just look at the fact that we have what you could call uh, a sort of mind immune system or a psychological immune system. So we all know we have a biological one. Um, that's why we're able to survive things like COVID and, and viruses and why we're still alive at the moment. So we, we all know we have a biological immune system um, and restorative system in, in our health. Now, the mind is part of the same system as the body. It's all one. And we have a psychological restorative system. And we just need to understand how that works and how we often innocently and, and very often invisibly do things to get in the way. So to look at this in a very generic way, you know, how come three year olds can go from huge tantrums to not in five, ten minutes? You know, what's going on? They can go from a very unsettled mind when they're having a massive paddy uh, to not. Same with us. So what you'll start to experience is that sometimes when you look at uh, what could happen as the consequences of, of this virus on, on yourself and the world, you could feel stressed, you could feel anxious, you might even feel some panic. Now, the thing to spot about that is all of those feelings that we've labelled with those words, those sensations, are really helpful. They're helpful to as a signpost to point you at what your mind is up to. So they are like a barometer. They're like a rumble strip in the road. And what they're pointing you to is not to necessarily buy into the reality that the mind is creating that moment, that you need to widen the aperture, you need to step back, press pause, let go of some of your thinking and allow fresh perspective to come through. So so feelings like anxiety, stress, disaster, castering, panic are all actually helpful. Not helpful because they're telling you something reliable about what's going on, what we would call out there, but helpful because they are pointing us to back off, trying to work it out, back off uh, what we're creating right now in, in the mind and allow it just to get some perspective allow the mind to settle and to see it fresh. And that system works by itself. It's beautifully innate. It's a capacity we all, every single one of us have. We just need to allow it to do its job. And the opposite of that is running psychological interference, where we try and control things, where we try and work it out, whether we uh, have a very strong sense of I, um, that, that there's a separation between us and, and, and source universe, and that I need to do this, this is going to happen. All of those feelings of separation, suffering, anxiety, panic are pointing us to say, back off what you're doing. See, see the intelligence of the system. See the innate resilience within us all. And that system, remember, works by itself, particularly when you conceptually get out of the way of it. Now, another feature of that system, uh, which I think can be very useful for this uh, phase in our evolution of, uh, of uh, the planet and society is one of our superpowers you know, as a human species, which is the capacity for realisation. So let's say at the moment it might look like there's going to be some consequences for 
your business, your income, your life from this. That maybe, you know, 2020, you know, what you were planning to happen uh, for your business or your income or your life in 2020, it's just not going to happen anymore. And maybe it's going to, you know, really, really have a significant impact on your business. You might have to uh, change some of your business model and your, your customers, uh, even your staff. And you're thinking, I don't know how to cope with that. Um, how are we going to manage if this happens, if this happens? Now, bear in mind what a realisation is. A realisation is when one set of thinking, one mindset dissolves and a new perspective a new reality emerges and it's often non-linear and when it occurs the very thing that was sort of causing the anxiety the insecurity the panic dissolves even though nothing's necessarily changed in the outside world but you have fresh thinking fresh resourcefulness you see it differently now, this is not saying this is not the same as saying you get resigned to it and you accept it and you just become a victim to it. No, you actually see it fresh and it brings with it resourcefulness, new ideas, insights, fresh resilience and OKness. Now, we they don't those realizations don't arrive until they arrive and we don't know what they're going to bring with them. And therefore, before we've had the realization, we worry that there's no way out of this. We might think, well, whatever happens here, it's all going to be difficult. And we can't see the idea that a realization could change that because in the level of thinking that we've got, it looks like nothing could change it because the situation is so rigid. Once you've had the realization, you look back and think, oh, yeah, OK, it's not as bad as I thought. But you don't know that until you've had it. <laughs> so what we have to see here is that it might look like this is a no-win situation, this is a dead end, this is going to create all sorts of consequence for me and my business or whatever. And it's just going to be worse. Now, that's pre-realisation. If we know and understand our capacity for realisation, we realise at some point, and we can't control the, we can't, we can't order a realisation online or have an app for it, but we know they exist. The capacity for them exists for any single person in any single situation. It's just a design feature. And once we've had that, it will look different. But before we've had it, we just need to be okay with not knowing. Okay with whatever's going on. And that kind of neutrality about it as much as possible, I'm not saying we're always going to be able to do this, actually makes us more fertile for the realisation. Again, it's like that barometer pointing us back to the system that's going to be resourceful to solve this for us or see it fresh. So we need to respect and understand our capacity for realisation. It's such a fundamental feature of what we've got going for us. However, it's not really respected. Because what we tend to do is in, in our conditioned minds is seek information over insight, information over realisation, action over, in, in, over insight. Because we think that's a responsible thing to do. Sometimes actually less is more. And then once the realisations come through, we'll see, we'll see fresh. So we need to respect that capacity for realisation. So important. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, is really, um, it, it's quite a meta piece, really. It's, it's, it's something that sits above everything. And it may sound a little trite, but I, I would urge you to uh, reflect on this. Uh, and that is that whatever ever happens in, in any aspect of your experience of reality, um, at the level that matters, we're always okay. We're always okay at the level that matters. Now, now, what do we mean by that? What, what, what do we mean by at the, at the level that matters? Well, just, just have a reflect for a moment that as, as a human being, your capacity to experience uh, joy, freedom, love, resourcefulness, connection, those things, those wonderful felt things cannot be damaged or taken away from you permanently by anything. 
They are innate. They are inherent. They are part of the system. So anyone is always within the capacity of experience thing, the things that truly, truly matter to us, which actually, if you think about it, is, is connection, joy, freedom, love. I don't mean freedom to walk around and go to a football match. I mean freedom in the mind. Th that cannot be damaged by whatever the mind produces. So if you think about it as a, uh, a television uh, or a movie screen, whatever the TV is showing doesn't damage the TV. doesn't matter what channels you watch on that TV, the TV is okay. So whatever panicky, anxious, insecure thinking we might have in our mind, and however long we experience that, whether that's minutes or weeks, days or years or decades, does not damage or break or weaken the innate capacity to experience those things in life. Now, you might be going, well, hang on a minute. That's just not accurate. Look around. There's lots of people in, in suffering with their mental health or in anxiety. And of, of course there are. I'm not, not denying that and I'm not disrespecting that. I'm just saying it's very, very well veiled. It gets hidden through the conceptual mind. It, we, we run psychological interference on it trying to help ourselves, innocently pointing ourselves outward, um, trying to fix ourselves, seeing ourselves as a separate self. Now, I realize this sounds a little profound, but the little gist of this to uh, have a fertility to, to have a curiosity about, is that if you boil it right down, the very thing that we're all after, the capacity for that is always available. Because you will have experienced that in your life, even when something is going terrible, you will have a moment of it's okay, until your thinking comes and tells you not. So you might even be experiencing that right now. You might wake up in the morning and it might feel like five seconds into the morning you get this heavy feeling. Oh, there's a coronavirus, it's causing havoc. Now in that very second before you had that thought, you were okay. You were okay during that thought, you just didn't notice it. So whatever's going on on, on, the, on the surface of the water and the waves, you just go a foot underneath that and it's okay. And that's undamageable, whoever we are. We just don't notice that. And we get very focused on what the world's up to and what are the content of our reality is up to rather than the very nature of it. So the worst case scenario, of course, you know, is that, is, is that life turns upside down and the life as you know it is not the same. And yes, of course, that would be different. And that would not fit in with the preferences that we have in our conceptual mind about how our lives would be. But rest assured, underneath that, the things that we hold most dear would still be there. They may be hidden. They may be veiled. But they can come back through. And that, that capacity exists for absolutely anyone. So that may sound a long way away from where you are right now. It may sound a little trite. But... If you just reflect on it for a moment, you might get a little resonance that that's there within us. Something to reflect on. So, so to bring this um, little episode to a close, the, the sort of the practical uh, things that we would point to is to notice the mind's ability to get to clarity when you don't know. To restore to well-being when you feel anxious and secure or full of panic to have fresh thinking to see the world differently through a realization so when you don't know how you're going to deal with something you don't need to know not knowing is much more important than knowing because not knowing allows a space for fresh to come through and always know that the most important things to us never ev ever disappear they may disappear from sight but they never actually disappear And as we evolve through this situation at the moment, you'll notice that your aperture to it varies. It contracts and expands. And our experience of it will look, in some moments, very real and very true. And in some moments, it will just look real and not true. 
and just point yourself there point yourself to that feeling barometer to tell you where to go when it feels light and easy and obviousness that's probably giving you a clue you're heading the right way when it feels heavy or anxious or full of insecurity back off settle down so anyway we hope this has been uh, useful just to reflect on a little bit differently about this situation and um, carry on being curious Take care of yourselves and uh, see what emerges. Until next time, be curious.